My friends, welcome to my quick tutorial series on how to join a game as a player and also how to create your first campaign or host a, an ongoing campaign as a GM. Yeah, it's simple stuff, so I just combined it all into one quick video. Um, so after you've loaded up Fantasy Grounds, there are a couple of buttons on the left side. We're going to start off with the Join Campaign button. So to join someone else's game, you just click that. You can either join a cloud game. This is where you just want to ask your GM whether or not they are hosting the game in the cloud, in which case you could search for their name. Or if you know their name exactly, you can just type it in here and join it. It should show up in the list below. If they have a password enabled, you just enter that password and you will pop into their game. It's that easy. Um, LAN it's not always that easy. Uh, if you join a LAN game, you would just get the IP address from your GM, paste it in here, ask them what port they're using. 1802 is the default. There might be some problems because uh, if your GM hasn't port forwarded this, sometimes there are issues. So be forewarned there. They are usually surmountable, but not always. I've had my fun with it. Okay, uh, if if you are a player, you can use the timestamps below to jump to the next section where you actually enter the campaign for the first time, uh, because this is just all going to be Dungeon Master stuff for a couple minutes. Creating your campaign for the first time, ooh, very exciting. Obviously, you choose your campaign name, you choose which rule set to use. For this series, I'm using 5e. Um, you can get your internal external IP addresses here to provide your players. You would choose a password if you would like to. You can choose what name you want uh, to show up in chat uh, it within your game for you. You choose whether or not you want to do cloud and have it be a public or private game. Or you could choose LAN and then choose which port you're using. 1802 is the default. So you usually want to keep that and then maybe do a little test run with it with someone before you try to have your real session just to make sure it all it all works and you're not gonna have to go down the port forwarding rabbit hole it's that simple then let's say that you've already created the campaign in the past and you're just uh, coming back to it uh, good news that everything you did in your last campaign saves and carries over so you just select that the name of that campaign the rule set is stuck for good reason um, so it'll say what rule set you're using. You can use the password of your choice. Um, you can change all of these between sessions. So I should have mentioned that when you create your campaign. This is not going to be permanent. When you load it, you can change these between sessions, which is really nice. And then choose your theme. A lot of people ask me which theme I'm using. It's the D&D official one. I like it. Uh, it's that simple. Once you enter the campaign for the first time, whether as a player or as a DM, this is what it'll look like. Um, you'll have a little campaign setup box, box with links to the to the wiki. Great wiki, but you don't need it. You've got me. All right, so then you're going to come over to your library. Uh, so library is where you manage your data. Um, a quick note, you can see that there are these buttons over on the right side. By clicking buttons over here, you change which buttons are accessible to you. So which data you can very quickly access. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of categories, so having all might be a little bit too much for you. Um, you can also customize it by saying, let's say you're a player, but you want access to quests and feats. Um, you can just check those boxes to add the buttons. OK. If you haven't purchased any modules, you could hit up the store by pressing this button. To access your modules, you click this. Uh, if you were starting this off for the first time and you haven't purchased anything and you just want to try it out for free, good news, you totally can. Um, let's get an example real quick. So we'll go back to the GM buttons. Um, right now, all of these data report repositories are empty. So we've got these NPCs. We've got these items, all empty, right? Uh, let's let's load up let's load up the 
5 ESRD stuff. Bestiary, our NPCs. Data, a lot of stuff. Magic items, more stuff. Sweet. Um, and all of these links, when you click on them, it just links you to the data server. NPCs, character sheet, for items, stuff. Uh, so you can you can play for free. You can try out using this data for free. All of this stuff works just like the stuff that you would actually pay for. Um, it's just less content. Uh, you'll also notice that there are basic rules. I recommend not using those. So for example, when I load the basic rules, you can now see that we have repeats of items or NPCs and items. Uh, but much less content from the basic rules than from the SRD. So if you're sticking with free, I recommend just leaving the basic rules unloaded. Then you've also probably noticed these buttons. So red means that you have blocked your, this is for a GM only. Red means that you've blocked your players from loading it. Uh, green, you just click it to change, means that the players are allowed to load it. So why why not just give everything to your players? So this is especially for Dungeon Masters who are using the Ultimate License and sharing all of your content with your players, which is what I do, and it works great. Uh, unless you give them access to everything, and they load everything. And that can be a little bit overwhelming for them sometimes. I think maybe it just kind of depends on your uh, internet connection and on their their computers, so if they're playing on like a dinky laptop, no bueno. Um, yeah, and once you load something, you can unload it. And what's really nice about these things, about the whole premise of how Fantasy Grounds uh, uh, content management system works, is that, let's give an example. So we'll load the Dungeon Master's Guide Oh, and uh, quick, quick note, side note, you've probably noticed that some of these things say players. Um, that just means that the content that is most useful for the players will be provided to them, but not all the other stuff. Um, so that can kind of also help mitigate some of the, the issues with um, players being inundated with the data that you're sharing with them. Okay, so now you can see the Dungeon Master's Guide stuff has loaded. Um, let's also throw in the Monster Manual. And let's throw in Xanathar's. So what's really nice is that instead of jumping around and going to a different a bunch of different books or looking in different places. Now all of your data is categorized. You can search all of it, you can filter all of it. Um, and you can see that all of the sources that we've loaded are now present in each of these. So I've got some Xanathars, you've got some Dungeon Masters. So when you go back to your library, you can see that the rules that we loaded are now present here. You can access them by clicking on them. You can do keyword searches specifically just in one source at a time, like Dungeon Master's Guide right in here. Um, you can also click on the reference manual. Every book has one, and that's if you want to uh, read this book page by page, as if it were the real book, and just do some light reading. You can also jump around all the sections. They are all hyperlinked. So I hope this video was useful for you. Um, it's probably about now that some cards are loading on the screen that uh, invite you to check out my full tutorial series or some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck.